if you've ever needed help, yes, you've got the ambulance. If you've ever been in trouble, yes, the police are there. But whenever you've needed urgent medication or blood or you've needed a sample going to the hospital urgently, who have you called? Because we're the people that you would call. Devon Free Wheelers is a blood bike charity which is completely funded through charitable donations by the general public. We support the local hospices, surgeries, hospitals and general public by assisting them with blood samples, any sort of sample, donor milk and medical equipment. So my day-to-day -day job for my sins is I'm a design technology teacher at a local school in Plymouth. But my role within Devon Free Wheelers is that uh, first and foremost I'm a rider. Uh, I joined to, to be a, a blood bike rider. I'm second rider for tonight. Part of that process is that I have to do a full, complete fleet check on it, which is checking everything, making sure it's okay. I will then call into control and find out what my jobs are for the evening. Hello, control. This is Delta Foxtrot Whiskey 23. Over. Stay safe out there. Uh, a bit wet and windy. Just control standing by. Emma. I'm fine, thanks. What have you got for me? Uh, just to let you know that I've got the bike, I've done the complete fleet check on it and I'm good to go. First job heading off to Ernest Settle. Okay, okay then. All right. Bye. Thank you. Speak soon. Bye. All good to go. The controller will take on the jobs um, for the riders and delegate them to the riders. Good afternoon, Devon Freewheelers. I'll communicate with the general public, local surgeries, uh, doctors, hospitals, hospice, um, and ensure that all samples, medication, medical equipment, etc., donor milk is all taken to the right places. Wonderful. What I'll do now is I'll just give the rider a ring now for you and get him on the road, and hopefully we can get that collected before five o'clock and to Dereford Hospital for you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Jane. Bye now. Hello, my name is Delia Colgate and I volunteer as a controller for the Devon Freewheelers. Hello, uh, I'm Malcolm Colgate, I'm Delia's husband, and I do controlling with Delia for the Devon Freewheelers. We start our shift tonight at five o'clock-ish, so we take over from head office who've had the phone lines. So the phone lines are transferred to us. We already have a list of jobs that are already in place, which the drivers have to complete tonight. But we also take phone calls from doctor surgeries and hospitals who need blood transporting or samples of any description. And we take those and then we inform the drivers in the areas that the work is, what jobs they have to do. As the jobs come in during the evening, we contact them to tell them another job's come in. I mean, it's a vital part of the, of the charity, really, and they are the unsung heroes, as far as I'm concerned.
So the fundraising aspect of the charity is to help raise funds for the charity to allow the bikes to be put on the road for the cars, for all of us to function within the system. Today, as part of our charity fundraising, we have uh, advertised locally uh, a charity car wash. Fundraising is paramount for the charity. You know, we don't get any funding from the NHS. It's all down to the general public's generosity and donations. Every penny counts because it keeps the bikes on the road and it keeps the volunteers safe. Yeah, we certainly had a, a good number of cars. I think we've washed in excess of it, about 30 cars. I think a couple of the cars deserved certainly double what we, we were charging. Um, but yeah, it was good. All the customers seemed to be happy. There's some really lovely comments from some people saying, you know, thank you for everything you do. Um, and it's, they don't just mean, obviously, the car washing. One of the big fundraising events that we do do is fundraising at places like Tesco's in Honiton. It's really important for the riders to make ourselves known to the public as well, because most of what we do is at night. Uh, it's generally after six o'clock and generally in the early hours as well, that if we if we don't actually meet the public, they're not aware of what we do because they're all tucked up in bed or watching TV. So on a monthly basis, Devon Free Wheelers collects donor breast milk and all the hospitals across Devon and even in Cornwall as well require constant top-ups for the neonatal units. The breast milk increases the chances of survival dramatically of um, premature babies. One of our riders or drivers goes and meets the, uh, the, the gentleman, Mike Burns, um, who will then give us the amount that the hospitals have requested. The West Rider will take it on down to Dereford, who will then meet the Cornwall Blood Bike Team, who take it down to Truro. On shift one night when picking up from Trelawney um, in Plymouth, uh, I went and clapped to the samples and when I was coming back down to the bike, uh, a gentleman sort of leant on the wall and, you know, asked me what I was doing, basically. Right? Oh, hey, 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 hey. Okay. I said, what was going on? This is for doctor's surgery. Well, you, if you ever come here... He was interested because it was his surgery. Yeah. You know, he was just fascinated by, by what we did and he said, well, I didn't realise, you know, that, that's that's what you do and I said well that's because you don't see us you know when we come and collect the surgeries are closed oh. well with everything going on at the moment with all the short staff and everything oh. you know I've got to admit you know your life is on our hands sort of thing you know yeah. so you, you are vital so we all come to do yet another person that it's going to it's hopefully helped um, but also he can spread the word about you know, who comes and collects those samples from his surgery? We don't get any government funding. Yeah, I, I completely, just you know, charities you know, and donations. Yeah, charities you get. Yeah. Feel like air ambulance then. Yeah, absolutely. Air we support yeah. the air ambulance as well. Yeah, yeah. So. We do support the Devon Air Ambulance and the Dorset and Somerset Air Ambulance as well. Um, and we basically top up the Lyoplast, which is carried on board for emergency situations. I had to be on call from midnight uh, just gone to the end midnight today in case there was an emergency resupply. Hello, Hello. I'm here to get blood for the air ambulance, please. Thank you. The air ambulance does a lot more than I think people realize. Part of that is being able to deliver blood and plasma that's got to be supplied, and that's where Devon Free Wheelers come in. To show you what we do, this is the blood tracking form that accompanies these. They have a little red tags on here. They're just like cable ties with a number on. So I check that the red is that number and the blue is that number. And then I sign for it with the date and time. 
Neil keeps a copy here in case anything happens to this. And that's really the job done. And that means we can track Hago. My name's Ian, I'm a consultant in anaesthetics and intensive care medicine and I work on the Dorset and Somerset Air Ambulance. The Blood Bike has been working with us since 2016. They bring blood from Dorset County Hospital Transfusion Department up to the Air Ambulance base uh, every 48 hours. Today is change over day. Our Credio cubes that contain the blood can keep the blood cold for a certain period of time, but after two days we need to exchange that over with fresh blood and plasma. We've been carrying blood on the aircraft since 2016 and that's been a real game changer for us because before then we were treating patients but because they were bleeding actively and we needed to get them to hospital they would die in front of us because we didn't have any blood products to keep people alive. Every time that I bring the, the blood out to the team here they're immensely grateful and I, I find that actually quite humbling given what they do and the circumstances they operate under and the kind of trauma that they see and you, you might think it was all um, they're all kind of inured to all that but they are just very grateful and I, I feel frankly humbled by that. In 2012, I had a brain hemorrhage. I was unaware of it happening completely, and I spent two weeks in Derford Hospital, um, which was more of a traumatic event for my family than me. My daughter, Emma, was a blood donor for quite a long time. And then she had a brain hemorrhage, and because of the medication she was on, she wasn't allowed to donate blood, so she wanted to give back in some other way. I sort of thought, I've got to do something else as a result. You know, I need to give back, I want to give back in, in some other way. I owe my life to the doctors and the surgeons and the nurses there who looked after me. Of all the things that I was told that potentially might affect me as a result of this, I, it really hit me hard that I couldn't give blood. I've given blood all my life and I know how important it is. She's had a motorbike license for a long time and she obviously heard of the blood bikes and was and became involved. Emma's dad um, rode a motorbike from well from the age of about 18 and um, she used to love going on the back when she was you know a child. He was 80 um, when he died and he had a stroke so in, it was it all happened very quickly unexpectedly so it was quite a shock um, for everyone when he he passed away um, I didn't know how much money I was going to get um, in his will I wasn't expecting anything and you know obviously it's not it's not what you focus on but when I realized that you know there was going to be a little bit um, I knew what I wanted to do it was without question that I wanted to gift a bike to the charity um, in honour of my dad, and I know that he would, um, he would be proud of that. You know, he never saw me become a, a blood bike, but I talk to him when I'm on shift all the time. She just happened to say one day, when she was telling me about it, after it had arrived, that it was, it was going to be a blue bike. And I said, well, that's very appropriate, really. So she said, why? I said, well, because before he used to ride a motorbike, when he was a very young lad, he always rode a, a push bike. 
and he always had a blue bike and, and so his friends used to call him Blue Boy. So it was a, a no-brainer that the, the blue bike for the charity was, was named Blue Boy. So tonight we've done uh, 34 jobs. Um, we've had around about 676 samples, whether they be blood, urine, uh, one was an envelope. Yeah, swabs. Swabs. COVID samples. COVID samples occasionally. We've done 416 miles, give or take a bit. So all in all, it's quite a quite a good night for 30. For a Friday night, that's quite good. It's quite a lot of work. Yeah, quite a long run round, really. Overall. Yes, that was quite... Yeah, quite a long journey. Oh, here's... Sorry. That sounds like... Uh, take the Glen. You'll need it, possibly. No, it's... Um, Glen. Sorry, Glen. Hello. Um, I'm now going to take... I'm going to take the... Take Blue Boy back. Um, Tuck him up for the night and then I'll I'll message you when I get home. Okay. Go safely. Bye bye. 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 I picked uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, nine from nine different um, surgeries uh, and locations, and I collected a hundred samples. So it's a hundred patients that we've we've helped tonight. Hopefully, I'm going to go home. I'll take this bike back because I'm second rider and pick my bike up, uh, ride home and have something nice warm and hot to eat and drink I, I hope. I think it's really important that members of society understand what it is that air ambulances and the people that um, do blood bikes all across the country do. And they're sort of the unsung heroes because people don't really see that work going on in the background. If it wasn't for um, the volunteers, um, we wouldn't have this charity. You know, I look upon the volunteers as all as a family. You know, if, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the controllers, we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the riders, we wouldn't be here, and so on and so on. So we're all like a family. We're all out there to help the general public, and it's like a large cog. If one link is missing from that cog, it won't work. You know, at the end of the day, you see the air ambulance, you see the police cars, you see the fire engines, but you don't see the lads out on the road. If Devon Free Wheelers didn't exist, um, the biggest thing that would happen is that the 200,000 plus pounds that we save the NHS every year goes back onto the NHS. And obviously the NHS is already underfunded, under massive pressure, um, and all the deliveries and collections that, that, that we do would then fall to uh, private jobs at huge cost. Um, when you've got ready and willing volunteers to, to do it.